uh, to bomb two Bronx synagogues and shoot down U.S. military airplanes. The men face eight charges, including conspiracy to use weapons of mass destruction and to acquire and use anti-aircraft missiles. We can now cross live to our Washington, D.C. studio, where Priya Sridhar is with the investigative journalist Webster Tarpley. Now, Priya, it looks like these four men are facing accusations on many fronts. That's right, and I'm joined by investigative journalist Webster Tarpley right now, and he has some of his own theories about what's really going on with this case. Webster, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you. So first of all, tell me what's going on here. What's, what's behind this whole, this whole story? This is another production from a long-standing uh, FBI theater of the absurd. It's a, it's a circus. Uh, it's something that we've seen again and again. Uh, they are reaching the bottom of the barrel in terms of the available patsy pool. So it's getting hard to have that willing suspension of, of disbelief. These are now the four Bronx bombers. Uh, three U.S. citizens, one Haitian. They're all very poor, poverty-stricken, mentally impaired uh, black men, ex-convicts, probably converted to Islam in prison, probably by an imam who is also from the FBI. I had a recruitment operation going on in there. They're accused of wanting to bomb cars at a Jewish synagogue in Riverdale, which is part of the Bronx, in New York City. Also trying to shoot down airplanes at a U.S. Air National Guard base in Newburgh, New York. In each case, C-4 plastic explosive provided by the FBI that wouldn't work, and Stinger missiles, uh, SAMs, that were provided by the FBI that also wouldn't work. And the, so, so why would the FBI do this? What, what were they thinking? Well, the goal is Pakistan, right? The, ever since the Obama West Point speech, we can see that the U.S. is massively targeting Pakistan in every way. So in the past, we've had these things linked to all sorts of different countries, but now it's Pakistan. It's Jaish A. Muhammad that these people have been sheep dipped in. Right? They've, they've been, a connection has been established for them. And let's just go through. Who are these patsies? James Cromarty, uh, described as a wannabe terrorist of limited capacity and limited means. Laguerre Payen, I guess he's the Haitian. This is, according to his own lawyer, mentally challenged, taking medicine for schizophrenia, a low borderline IQ, in other words, a moron. Right. Of so, the other two, one is a purse snatcher. One of them was stupefied on marijuana the okay. day of the big attack. And so how could, you know, targeting cars outside of a synagogue, what, tell me the connection between that and Pakistan. Well, because you're going to whip up a tremendous hysteria, Islamophobia, but not, not the Bush-style Islamophobia against Iran or Iraq or whatever that was, but now it's got to be directed against Pakistan, and that's the connection that they've created. The way they did this was... <clears throat> The FBI provocateur involved is a guy called Maksud. Uh, he's, his real name, I think, Shahid Hussein, variously described as fishy and creepy. So he comes on the scene. These poor guys have just been uh, re released from prison. They're destitute. He comes on the scene with money, jobs, cell phones, computers, rent money, money to buy dinner, and he tells the principal, Patsy Cromarty, brother, whatever you need, you're going to get from me. So it's really an open and shut uh, case. According to the Associated Press, these people are amateurs. They, they were not able to go into a Walmart and buy guns and cameras even after they'd been given money by the FBI. The nation calls them losers, ex-cons, and drug addicts. Other sources call them semi-retarded potheads. Right. So what you see is a complete sting, a complete entrapment, all fabricated. There's no criminal intent or ability to begin with. Everything is provided as props by this right. FBI circus. And so you referenced President Obama's speech and you said, you know, that Pakistan is the new target. However, he's saying that Pakistan and the United States have to have this important partnership. Um, what's going on there then? The goal, once again, is to destroy Pakistan as an energy corridor between Iraq, Iran, other countries in the Middle East that produce oil, and China, because that's where a pipeline could go. The pipeline could start in Iraq, it could go to Iran, it can go up through Pakistan, cross the Himalayas above Kashmir, go into China. This would be oil going towards China and Chinese economic influence coming into the Middle East and essentially cutting out the Anglo-Americans. And how is that going to happen, the, dis the destruction of Pakistan? The, the idea is to provoke a civil war. In other words, take the existing civil war inside Afghanistan and massively export it. The U.S. would possibly consider a direct attack on Pakistan, but they can't 
can't because Pakistan is too big and it has nuclear weapons. So there's nuclear deterrence. The only way to do it is to take the Pashtun population in Afghanistan and Pakistan, rile them up into uh, an independence movement, do the same thing with the people in Balochistan, and with that you've, you've carved uh, Afghanistan, you've broken Pakistan into four pieces or three, mm -hmm. and you've even started to carve Iran because those Baluchis are a peripheral group of the Iranians. So and so maybe that is these why four men were kind of pawns. What's going to happen to them now? Well, they're going to be given a show trial, and this will coincide with the Khalid Sheikh Mohammed in this atmosphere now of war hysteria that Obama's trying to create against Pakistan. So the chances, I think, of a fair trial for them are, are about nothing. And again, this is, this is all an insult to your intelligence. Nobody in his right mind could take these stories seriously. We've had this again and again. We had the Fort Dick Six. In this case, uh, they were so lackadaisical they didn't want to do anything. The JFK Airport pipeline bombers, led by a sad sack who sold incense in the streets, his means of livelihood was to get small change out of out of. Uh, uh, pay phones. The Liberty City 7 in, uh, in Miami, Haitians, who are also dirt poor, mentally impaired. So again and again, the same story. You have a provocateur from the FBI with unlimited money, mm -hmm. a group of, of essentially desperate and poor and mentally challenged individuals, bring in some junk weapons and you've got a case and you can inflame public opinion and direct that against your foreign target, which is what they're doing in this case. And it's Pakistan. Thank you so much, Mr. Tarpley. Well, we'll certainly be keeping you updated on that case. But for now, it's back to you guys in Moscow. Thanks, Priya. That was